Hello everyone, welcome back to Think Outside the Board and the second crowdfunding roundup for March 2024. And in this week's video, we're gonna take a look at campaigns that launched between March the 6th and March the 12th. I'll go over my picks from that period, we'll watch some videos together, we'll look at the pledges and the add-ons, and hopefully I'll either bring something to your attention that you didn't know about, or I'll help you make a pledging decision on something that you already were interested in, but you just weren't sure what to pledge at or what add-ons to add to your pledge. And we have six different campaigns that we'll be looking at today. As always, my videos are bookmarked or tabbed, so if you don't have time to watch the whole thing, you can scroll over the play bar, find the content you're looking for, and just watch that content. And if any of the campaigns speak to you and they're campaigns you wanna go and seek out, you can just go down into the description section of the video where I have links to all of the campaigns that we're discussing. And the best way to support this channel is still to like and subscribe. That will help me move the channel forward and get closer to launching new types of content like revamp teach and review videos and live streaming of games. Those are both types of content I have planned for the future a little bit later in this year. So let's get started and take a look at the first campaign of the week here. This is for Armello the board game. So Armello was a March 12th launch as is everything that we're talking about today. Uh, all six campaigns just happened to launch at the very end of our week-long period on Tuesday, March the 12th, which is the big day for board game launches. And as we can see here, they currently have $231,000 in funding off of a $20,000 funding goal. That's about 11 and a half times that funding goal, and the campaign will run until April the 4th. Now, our Mellow the Board Game is based on a video game, which I actually own and have played quite a bit. The board game is designed by Rob Hensu, who's best known for Dragonfire, Dungeons & Dragons Castle Ravenloft board game, Epic Spell Wars of the Battle Wizards, Duel at Mount Skull's Fire, and Shadowrun Crossfire. Now, there are a few artists on this project, but the two most important ones are Dan May and Greg May. Dan May worked on Black Orchestra, Everdell, and A War of Whispers, and his brother Greg May has worked on Anomaly, Planetarium, and Wingspan. And this game is being published by King of the Castle Games Company, which is a relatively new company. The only board game they've published so far, previous to this one, is a game called Rochi that published in 2018. And it's not a game that I personally know or have ever heard of. But this is a tactical fighter. It uses hand management. And again, it's got a video game theme. It is actually based on an existing video game. So we're gonna go ahead and take a look at the two minute video. It'll give you a better idea of what the board looks like and the gameplay. And then we'll go over the three pledges as well as some add-ons. The kingdom of Armello is in peril. Its king has fallen into madness. Only you can liberate the realm. Will you answer the call? The hit video game comes to the tabletop in a brand new board game adaptation. Select your hero from one of the four great clans and venture out into the dangerous and magical world of our mellow. You'll complete quests to earn rewards and increase your prowess. Fill your pockets with gold by controlling settlements. Explore dungeons while hunting for treasure and recruit followers to aid you in your travels while gaining prestige throughout the land. Avoid the Mad King's guards, vanquish monstrous banes, and battle your rival heroes using an explosive dice-based combat system. Each hero has their own unique ability, starting deck, and experience cards. Upgrade your deck with new equipment, powers, and hard-earned rewards to customize your playstyle and adapt to threats. When you're strong enough, win glory for your clan and challenge the king himself to a duel to your death. How dare you challenge me? Our mirror is mine, and I am its king. All right, so the first of these pledges down here is for the standard edition of the game. I'm gonna talk about shipping throughout this video. Whenever I talk about shipping, it is for the continental United States, the lower 48. So if you are in Alaska, Hawaii, or any other country, you need to 
verify the shipping for your area, it's probably going to be a little bit different. But in the continental US, we're looking at a $79 pledge with $25 in shipping or $104 total, and that will just get you the base game. The second pledge level is for the collector's edition. So this is a $109 pledge, also with $25 shipping or $134 total, and that will just get you the collector's edition. If we want to know the difference between that, here are the collector's edition extras. So this is what will be coming in that collector's edition. You've got a UV coated box, a deluxe six fold 22 by 33 inch board, a cardboard palace model, uh, two King's Treasure cards, four punch board dice trades, which are specific to each character, a metal first player token, and stretch goals that are found throughout that are marked for the collector's edition. So those are the unique items you will not be getting in the standard edition, but will be in the upgraded collector's edition. Finally, if you want to do the Everything Armello Pledge, this is a $150 pledge with $25 in shipping or $175 total. Now, in this pledge, you will also be getting the Collector's Edition, but they're going to be adding a bunch of other things to the pledge. That includes the Heroic Dice Set, the Screen Printed Wooden Tokens, the Clan Enamel Pin Set, and the Guppy or Squire Alternative Art Card. Now, some of these things can be added on. Uh, there is an add-on section here, but it's actually right below where we are. So if you want to add on those heroic Armello dice, $20 as an add-on plus some additional shipping and tax. The wooden token, same thing, $20 as an add-on plus some additional shipping and tax. The clan shield pin set, $20 as an add-on plus some additional shipping and tax. And then there's a guppy pin. Now, this is a $6 add-on. This is not included in any of the uh, pledge levels, so if this is something that you want, you will need to add that on. Uh, the item that comes in the everything is a alternative art card. So it's not the pin, it's an art card. If you want the pin, no matter the pledge level that you're pledging at, you will need to add it on. And finally, if you are pledging the collector's edition, we said that was $134 with shipping, and everything Armello is $175 with shipping, so that's a $41 difference. And the Heroic Dice Set, the Wooden Tokens, and the Enamel Pin Set are all 20 bucks. So there's a $40 difference between these two pledges, but you're getting $60 worth of things plus an additional alternate art card. So if you do want all of those things, it's a great deal. If you don't want uh, you know, one of those three $20 items, then it's kind of a wash. And then finally, King of the Castle Games Company is planning on delivering our Mel of the Board game in April of 2025. Now, this is the first of four games that we're going to be looking at on Kickstarter. Two games are on GameFound, but we're going to stay on Kickstarter for a couple more campaigns. The next one is Flashpoint Legacy of Flame. Uh, this had just rounded $134,000 off of a $20,000 funding goal. That means they're operating at about six and a half times uh, that funding goal, and the campaign's going to run until March 29th. Now, Flashpoint Fire Rescue is a pretty well-known game among gamers. Uh, the game was published in 2011, so it's been 13 years, and there's been a lot of expansions. We'll be talking about that over the course of this campaign in the add-ons and in the pledges themselves. Uh, but you should know that the game itself is a cooperative game that uses action points, pick up and deliver, and variable player powers. And this new version is for a legacy game that plays one to six players. Now, the new legacy version is designed by Ken Franklin, who's worked on Back to the Future, Dice Through Time, The Mansky Caper, and Suro Phoenix Rising. Uh, Kevin Lansing gets a designer credit in there, but I don't think he's worked on it. I think he's just the designer of the original game. So he self-published a game called Flashpoint in 2010. That was found by a bigger publisher who wanted to publish it, and so it was republished as Flashpoint Fire Rescue in 2011. It was cleaned up a bit, new art. Uh, and then Kevin also designed a game called Jurassic Parts. The two other co-designers on this legacy version of the game are Chris Leader, who's also worked on Back to the Future, Dice Through Time, Roll For It Deluxe Edition, and a couple of the unmatched games, Battle of Legends Volume 2 and Cobble and Fog, and then Kevin Rogers, 
who has also worked on Back to the Future Dice Through Time, and those same unmatched sets, Battle of Legends Volume 2 and Cobble and Fog. So all three of these designers have worked together before. All three of them worked on that Back to the Future Dice Through Time game. Now the two artists on the Legacy game are both carryovers from Flashpoint Fire Rescue, so if you're familiar with that game, this game should look identical. Uh, those artists are Louis Francisco, who's worked on the cartographers, Coup, Flashpoint Fire Rescue, The Resistance, The Resistance Avalon, and Role Player, and George Patsouris, who's worked on Agents of Smirsh, Flashpoint Fire Rescue, Mythos Tales, The Resistance, and The Resistance Avalon. The publisher here is Indie Boards and Cards. They're best known for Anne's End, Coup, Flashpoint Fire Rescue, and The Resistance. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at the uh, one and a half minute video here, and then we'll return to look at the five different pledges and a couple of add-ons. Fires are blazing all around the city. Only the brave have what it takes to team up and face these dangerous scenarios with courage. Will you join forces to combat these relentless fires before they spiral into uncontrollable chaos? In Flashpoint Legacy of Flame, your team will complete a heroic campaign over a dozen different episodes. With every episode building on the last, encounter brand new locations and unforeseen hurdles that expand on the original gameplay. You must work with your team to rescue helpless civilians from raging infernos and ever-changing scenarios. After each scenario, earn new equipment and upgrades to customize your firefighting team. And after the campaign ends, every map can be replayed with the characters you've created or the firefighters from the original games. Every move counts. Every decision matters. Leave no one behind. The people you save will define your legacy. Back Flashpoint Legacy of Flame today. Okay, so five different pledges for this one and a lot of different add-ons. Um, they're pretty ma much making it easy to get whatever you want from everything that's been published previously. So the first pledge here is called Flashpoint Legacy of Flame. That is for this new legacy version of the game. It is a $59 pledge plus $20 in shipping or $79 total. If we move up to the second pledge level, that's going to include everything from the previous pledge level and then throw in the base game. So it's a separate standalone game, uh, but if you don't have it, maybe you want to get it through this campaign. It's called Flashpoint Fire Rescue. So this pledge is an $89 pledge with $30 of shipping for $119 total. Now, if we go to all the new stuff, you're gonna be getting all of the new stuff from this campaign, but that means you're not getting that original base game. So we're removing that. You still got the legacy game, but they're adding in neoprene player mats and a cardboard board pack. The reason they're doing that is because the legacy game is going to come with kind of a binder. Uh, think about it like Gloomhaven Jaws of the Lion, where you're gonna be turning pages in a book and using that book as your maps. But if you want a cardboard map system like the game, the original game had, uh, or like you know regular Gloomhaven had, then you want that cardboard board pack. This is a $129 pledge with $40 in shipping or $169 total. Now, if we move to the next pledge here, Legacy of Flame plus Fire Rescue Expansions, you're no longer getting all the new stuff with this one. So the player mats are gone, the neoprene player mats, the cardboard board pack is gone. Uh, instead, you are getting the Legacy game and all seven expansions for the base game. You're not even getting the original uh, Flashpoint Fire Rescue board game. This is assuming you already have that base game. It will get you the new Legacy game, and it will also get you all of the expansions, all seven of them, that were produced for Flashpoint Fire Rescue previously. Uh, if you don't have any of them, this is definitely the, the pledge to go for if you have the base game. So this is a $179 pledge with $40 in shipping, $219 total, and the expansions that are involved in this are Second Story, Dangerous Waters, Extreme Danger, Honor and Duty, Tragic Events, Urban Structures, and Veteran and Rescue Dog. And then the final pledge 
adds back in the base game. So this is everything from that previous pledge plus the base game. No neoprene mats, no cardboard board pack. You'd have to add those on if you're doing this pledge and you still want them. So this is a $209 pledge with $50 in shipping or $259 total. Now let's go over here and look at the add-ons and their various prices. So that cardboard board pack, which will give you the ability to play all of the scenarios on actual boards instead of on uh, binder sheet pages, this is a $40 add-on. And then the neoprene player mats come essentially in bundles of two or multiples of two. So for $15, you're gonna be getting two neoprene player mats. And if you're only planning on playing with two players, that may be all you need. But if you want more, you can get four for 25 or six for 35. And again, the Legacy game plays up to six players. You can add on the original base game, Flashpoint Fire Rescue, for $32. And any of the seven expansions, most of them are $16. But Extreme Danger is $32, and Tragic Events is $20. So I do like the fact that, you know, they've presented everything here as add-ons because... You know, various backers out there could have any combination of these expansions that they've got over the years. Uh, but mix and match as you will. And then Indie Boards and Cards is planning on delivering this new legacy version of the game in January 2025. From there, we're going to take a look at our third Kickstarter campaign of the week. This is for Inventors of the South Tigris. Now, they're currently at $264,000. That's off of a roughly $14,000 funding goal. And Garfield Games always keeps shipping cheap and keeps their prices relatively cheap compared to you know, other companies in the industry. They make, I think, some of the best medium heavy and heavy euros out there, and they make it super affordable. And another thing that they do is, uh, if you're backing one of their campaigns, they will give you a set of promo cards that are Kickstarter exclusive. But that's the only difference going from the Kickstarter campaign to retail. So they make it really easy if you want to help support their company, uh, pledge th you know, through them directly, get a little bonus pack of cards, uh, but they're not doing a million different kinds of add-ons. They get the game looking the way they want to, and then it's gonna be the same game whether you're pledging it on crowdfunding or whether you eventually buy it at retail. You just won't get that extra card pack. And I like the fact that they do that. They make it very, very gamer friendly in every way, I think. Um, but because they keep their overhead a little bit lower and their funding minimums, funding goals are lower, that means that compared to their funding goal, they're, they're funding very, very well. They're funding over 19 times that funding goal. So they have the highest multiplier of this week. And this campaign is going to run until March 27th. Now I've heard that this latest game from Garfield, this is the third and final game in their South Tigra series, is the heaviest game that they have yet produced. They've made some lighter games, they've made some heavier games, uh, but saying that it's heavier than anything that they've made before is certainly saying something. And this game features mechanics like deck building, hand management, track movement, worker placement, and area majority. Now, it's co-designed by S.J. McDonald and Shem Phillips. S.J. McDonald has worked on Architects, Paladins, and Viscounts of the West Kingdom, Circadian's First Light, and Wayfarers of the South Tigris. Shem Phillips has most notably worked on Architects, Paladins, and Viscounts of the West Kingdom, Raiders of the North Sea, and Raiders of Scythia. And the artist here who has done all of the Garfield games, well, most of them, um... Shem Phillips' brother is starting to get his feet wet, and he's done like Hadrian's Wall, Raiders of Scythia, the Circadians line, but he hasn't actually done any of the games uh, in their trilogies, in their of the North Sea, of the West Kingdom, or of the South Tigris uh, lines. Those have, those have all been Mahal Dmitrievsky, better known as the Miko, or the Micho. So he has worked on, most notably, Architects, Paladins, and Viscounts of the West Kingdom, Endless Winter, Paleo-Americans, and Raiders of the North Sea. And then as a publisher, Garfield Games' highest rated games are Architects, Paladins, and Viscounts of the West Kingdom, Hadrian's Wall, and Raiders of the North Sea. We're going to take a look at this video, which is a longer video. So if you don't want to watch this entire explanation of gameplay, you can skip ahead. Uh, it's going to be like a six-minute video, but it will give you a very good idea of how the game works 
and an idea of how heavy it is compared to their previous games. After that, we'll take a look at the three pledge levels, which are very simple, as well as a simple add-on section. In Inventors of the South Tigers, players are aspiring inventors who are mashing together ideas with their inspiration, building prototypes, and maybe even publishing them. The game will take place over four rounds. The game, like all South Tigers games, will revolve around dice. On the left side of your board is where you will keep your dice. These will be in your study, the exhausted area, the ready area, your determined area, or your inspired area. On your turn, you will usually use your dice to take an action, and you can use dice from the ready, determined, or inspired areas. When using dice from the determined area, they will get a plus one to their value, and dice from the inspired area get a plus five, so they're basically always sixes. Throughout the game, you will do what is called brightening your dice, which is shown by this symbol. When you brighten a die, you may move it up one section outside or in your study. Moving dice in your study will gain you bonuses. When you brighten, you may instead move a die out of your study to the adjacent area. When dice move from exhausted to ready or out of your study, they will be rolled. Many actions will also cause you to use your craftspeople. You have a scribe, a chandler, a blacksmith, a carpenter, a tiler, and a weaver. When you use them, you will have to pay them the value shown in the area that they're in here. You will then flip them over and then move them up a level. To use them again, you will have to gain a refreshed craftsperson action. If you ever empty the bottom of your tower, you will gain a bonus and your tower will move up like this. As you move up in your tower, you will gain end game points, but your craftspeople are now better trained and therefore are more expensive. Okay, now that we've gone over some basics, let's talk about some actions that you can take. You may place a die up here to use one of your camels. This is how you will do the four main actions, invent, build, test and publish. And note that when doing the invent, build, or publish actions, if you use the matching die color, you will get a bonus. When you do the invent action, you will have to place dice equal to or greater than the value shown here on the device board that you want to invent on, and you'll have to discard device cards. You will then choose a device from your hand to invent and place it here. Any guilds you match on will put your influence in that minaret. You will then move your royalties marker one space over, which will give you more income at the beginning of rounds. Finally, you will place one of your invention tiles in cover up this spot here. You have now invented horse-powered eyeglasses. But now someone's gotta build it. You may take the build action and place a die on your camel equal to or greater than the value on the device card. You will also have to pay the craftspeople shown next to it. You pay them and move them up as we discussed earlier. Then both the builder and the inventor gain the bonus on the invention tile here. Note that you can build, test, and publish other people's inventions. Then you will turn this tile over and place it on the device card here. Place an influence marker to signify that you're the one who who built this and then move it to the built column. Now it's built and I think it's time to publish. To publish, you will place dice on your camel equal to or greater than the value of the tile here. You will then pay the inventor one coin unless it was yourself, pay your scribe and any other craftsperson of your choice and then move them up in your tower. You advance one spot on the royalties track and then place one of your influence on the publisher spot to show that you're the one who published it. And then you'll move it over to the published column. The last thing that you can do with inventions is test them. Note that you may only test inventions that have been built or published. Published. To do this, you will place one of the colored die on one of the test spots on the device board here, and then you will move your boat forward the amount of space is shown. When you move your boat, you will gain the workshop tile of the spot that it lands on. These will go into your workshop, and these can be activated by placing dice in that row, which is another action that you can take. You will place dice in the row that you want to activate, but make sure you pay attention to the values on the tiles. To activate a tile, you have to place dice equal to or greater than the value shown on a tile to activate it. So if I placed a 5 in this row, I could activate these two tiles, but not this one. If I place a 9, then I could activate all of them, and you may always activate them in any order you choose. Some of the workshop tiles require you to use at least one die of the color shown as well, either blue, orange, or charcoal. So those are the actions you may take with your dice, but you also have a few workers. These will go up on these spaces and will require you to spend your influence in the three guilds. As you saw with the various workshop tiles, there are a lot of different things you can do up here, but the main one we'll talk about is doing this red research action. When a workshop tile gets taken, you can then take a research action to place a research tile in that vacant spot. A player will place an influence on the open space and then draw three tiles and choose one to place there. If there is already a research tile and a player wants to access it, they may place one of their influence on it when taking this action instead of bringing out a new research tile. 
The research tiles in the first area will give you ongoing abilities. The tiles in the middle area will be bonuses you get when you place your tent. And the last section will be instant one-time bonuses. Speaking of your tent, the last kind of action you can take is placing your tent. When you do this, you will place it out on one of the spaces here and you will gain those bonuses. At this point, you're pseudo passed for the round. Though if players are still going, when it comes back around to your turn, you may activate a workshop in the same way you normally would, you may brighten a die, you may refresh a craftsperson, or you may pay any craftsperson to move dice from a workshop row to your exhausted area, freeing up that row. Once all players have placed their tent, the round will end. At the beginning of the round, starting with the second round, players will gain income. They will gain the bonuses where their royalty marker is, and then they'll gain the bonus in this green bar at the bottom of their tower. The game will end after four rounds, and then all players will score. Each guild will give points to whoever has the most influence. You will then score based on where your royalties marker is. You will gain points for your influence on research tiles. Your craftspeople will score points based on what floor they're on. Workshops will score if they have any points on them, and you will score uncovered points where your invention tiles are. Finally, the various devices will score. If a device is only built but not published, the builder will score one point for every tested die on the device. If it's published, the builder will score three points and the publisher will score one point per tested die. If the builder and publisher are the same player, they will only score one point for being the builder instead of three. Lastly, each device has endgame scoring on the bottom that both the builder and the publisher may score. The two numbers here dictate how many of that scoring condition you need to have to score either two or four points. For instance, this one says you will score two points if you have four influence in the blue guild, and you'll score four points if you have seven in the blue guild. Finally, four leftover device cards and coins in any combination are worth one point, and after all that, the inventor with the most points will win. So that is a in inventor. huge information dump, and I don't know if it's super useful to people uh, on a first watch in terms of like getting everything, but I think it can certainly give you an idea if it's a game for you and if you like the kind of interconnected mechanisms that they're showing. It reminds me a lot of a Vital Lacerda game because you've got, you know, publishing, inventing, building, testing, uh, various kinds of inventions, and there's like a progression that takes you through all those various actions. At the same time, it still feels very much like a Garfield game. So it's like kind of Lacerda by way of Garfield. And they're still using a lot of the same iconography that they've used in the past, which I think is really good. It makes it easier to pick up new Garfield games. Even the same font, like on the numbers, is, is the same. And in this video, you could see like they're using the same iconography for drawing a card, uh, victory points, things like that, some of the buildings. But... Especially with this one, I'm seeing a lot of new iconography as well. So these are all just things to be aware of, and I think if you're learning the game, you'll probably need to go back and read a rule book or watch that video a couple more times just because there's so much information so close together. But I do think it does give you enough information and enough of the, the kind of information to hopefully let you know whether this is a game for you or not. All right, so the, the pledge levels are fairly simple for this. Garfield Games always keeps it fairly simple. Um, there are two different language versions, so you just want to make sure you pledge for your language version. There's English, and then there's French and Portuguese. Uh, and in the United States, we're going to look at the English versions, but they're priced the same. Uh, in the U.S. here, the Inventor Pledge in English, it's a $46 uh, pledge plus $13 in shipping, and that's another thing. Garfield Games is just doing a flat $13 shipping fee across the board, so any pledge level is going to have $13 in shipping. So this first one here is $59 total, and that will get you the game and the Kickstarter promo pack, which will not be going to retail. If you want to go up a pledge level to the coin inventor, that will get you the same stuff and also a set of 50 metal coins. Uh, the pledge level this time around is 58 bucks plus $13 in shipping or $71 total. So that is a $12 increase over the previous pledge. Uh, metal coin sets cost about 13 bucks, so it's kind of a wash. It just depends on the day uh, that they collect money, what the exchange rate is, but it's going to be within a dollar or so uh, of the pledge itself. So you're not really saving any money doing the coin inventor versus doing it as an add-on. There is finally the collector pledge here. This is a $150 pledge with $13 in shipping still, or $163 total. 
This is going to take that coin inventor pledge. So you're still getting the inventors of the South Tigris, the coin pack and the promo pack. But now you're throwing in the previous two games in the series and the promo packs for those games. So you're getting Scholars of the South Tigris plus that game's promo pack and Wayfarers of the South Tigris and that game's promo pack. Uh, I don't believe that they have an add-on section here. However, they do list add-ons in the details. So these are things that you can add on when you go to make your pledge. So the optional add-ons include just the Scholars promos. This might be something you'd want if you picked up Scholars of the South Tigris at retail and you never got the promos. You can get the promos here for $5 as an add-on. Same thing with Wayfarers. You can also add on more metal coin sets. Uh, they are designed specifically for South Tigris, but they are the same from game to game. So theoretically, you really only need one coin set and you could just exchange it between games. Or if you have some extra cash and you're lazy, you could get a set for every game and just have one set of metal coins in each game box. And then they've also got the games themselves. So you can always add on more copies of Wayfarers, Scholars, or the new inventors, $46 each. Finally, Garfield Games is planning on delivering this campaign in December 2024, so that's this year. And I'll say this for Garfield, not only do they keep the prices low, the extras simple, shipping simple and low, but they deliver things more quickly than almost any other publisher around there. They definitely have made their publisher into a well-oiled machine. So they'll say things like this, it's gonna deliver in December 2024, which is like nine months out, and then it's not uncommon for them to actually deliver a couple months early, which is pretty insane. I think every other publisher could probably look to Garfield and take a page from their book and how to produce affordable Kickstarter campaigns well, cheaply, and quickly. I don't know how they do it, but they do it consistently. Okay, from there, we're going to go take a look at Robot Quest Arena Bot Battle. This is our first of two campaigns on GameFound, and they're currently at $330,000 off of a $25,000 funding goal, which, which puts them at about a uh, 13 times their funding goal. And if we flip this little digital card over, we'll see that this campaign is going to run until April 3rd. Now, this is actually a game that has already existed. And I always like to go and look at the game on Board Game Geek so we can see, you know, what it was uh, rated at, what the complexity is. I never actually went over to this one for Flashpoint because I ended up saying most of the things about it. But just if you're curious, Flashpoint has a 7.2. This is the base game from 2011. Um, so it's a pretty solid rating and a 2.20 complexity, which is just into the medium light range. And then if we're going to take a look at Robot Quest Arena, which was published last year, 7.8 rating and a 2.07 complexity scale. So they're kind of similarly rated in terms of quality by users, and they're also about the same type of complexity. Now, Robot Quest Arena is a game for two to four players, and it is co-designed by Rob Doherty, CJ Moynihan, and Paul Waite. Now, Rob has also worked on Ascension, that's where he cut his teeth. Then he founded Wise Wizard Games, which used to be called White Wizard Games, and they've published stuff like Hero Realms and Star Realms, and he's designed both of those and all of the stuff that has to do with that. Um, CJ Moynihan has worked on Epic Card Game, which is another game published by Wise Wizard Games. And Paul Waite has pretty much just worked on Robot Quest Arena. So Wise Wizard Games as a publisher has, uh, in addition to other things that I've mentioned, they've published Epic Card Game, Hero Realms, Kapow, Sorcerer, and Star Realms. And then finally, Robot Quest Arena is a miniatures fighter that uses deck building. So what we're going to do is take a look at the little video here. It'll tell us some more about the game. And then we'll come back. We'll look at the, the five pledges and a bunch of add-ons for this one. There we go. Ladies and gentlemen, power up your robots. Enter the arena. And welcome back. 
it's time to battle. Traps are on the flow. Now who's ready for more? Let's go. Welcome back to the arena. We battle to the end. Over here we never give up. We making moves. Trying to be the winner. This one's for everyone from experience to beginner. Upgrade your ability. Perfect your craft. And leave all the competition in the aftermath. It's time to meet our new contestants. Please welcome Tech and Nina is careful not to bother Get too close and you'll get shot See no boy thing is controlling the box Bubble will prepare whether you like it or not And Marcus always on a different vibe Nozzle with the freebies, you're in for a surprise Matilda locked in, you can see it in the eye Blades moving real fast while he's zooming by It's Robot Quest Arena Pick a side And this is Robot Quest Arena. I love this game. It's so fun and it's really easy to teach. And reviewers love it too, both the gameplay and the incredibly awesome robot minis. You can check it out for yourself in the review and playthrough videos below. For new players, you can get the base game and all the original exclusives in this campaign. In this campaign, we have four new adorable robots. If you are a returning player, don't worry. We have a reward tier just for returning players that has just all the new stuff. Each robot pack comes with a super high quality mini, a player board with your robot's unique power, three new game tiles, 20 new cards for the market deck, plus additional health cubes, a personal deck, and an additional spawn point so you can add more players to the game. There's also a new double-sided board with a larger arena and a big storage box that can hold everything. The new double-sided board fits in the original box or the storage box. It comes in two parts, so you can put the market wherever you want. In this campaign, we aren't doing stretch goals. Instead, rewards come with an exclusive BattleBot promo pack with an incredible 43 promo cards and 13 game tiles. We'll be doing daily reveals of these, so be sure to check back in to see all the exclusive goodies you'll be getting. Now pick your bot and get ready to battle. Pledge now. All right. So five pledge levels. Uh, the first one is the new player tier. This is a $69 pledge with $20 in shipping or $89 total. And this is going to get you the base game, Robot Quest Arena, plus this new bot battle promo pack. And I believe that's it, right? Just those two things, yes. Okay, so if we go to the new bots tier, this is an $89 pledge, $20 in shipping or $109 total. You are not getting the original base game with this. It's assuming that you already have it. You are getting the new bot battle promo pack, and then you are getting the four new bot packs. So working from this new bots tier, there are the next two pledge levels that kind of build off of this one. The first is the everything new tier. So you've still got the four bots, you've still got the bot battle pack, but it's gonna add on three more items. The storage box, the extra tile pack, and the big arena pack. This is a $159 pledge with $29 shipping or $179 total. Instead, you could go to the all bots tier, which starts from a similar place, but adds on different things. So in this one, you're not getting the extra tile pack, the big arena pack, or the storage box. Instead, you are getting the backer promo pack from the original campaign, the base game, and three extra bot packs that were available previously. One of those bot packs is Kickstarter exclusive, and one of the new four bot packs is also Kickstarter exclusive. So there's a group of four, a group of three, and then one of each of those is Kickstarter exclusive. So this is a $219 pledge, again with $20 in shipping, for $239 total. And then the all-in tier kind of combines those pledges and gives you everything. So you've got the base game, the storage box, both promo packs, the extra tile pack, the big arena pack, uh, all seven bot packs, and something that we haven't gotten before, a lot of sleeves, all the sleeves that you should need. So this is a $329 pledge with $25 in shipping. So that's the first pledge that's a little bit more expensive in shipping for $354 total. 
So let's say you don't want, you know, kind of the, the various packages. You want to mix and match your own thing. There are add-ons. You can add on copies of the base game for 60 bucks. Copies of the storage box for 39. This is a new item here. Um, there's the first promo pack from the first campaign. You can add this on for 25 bucks. You've got the three previous bot packs, which are $25 each. So there's Dozer and Singh, there's Kettle and Bianca and Annika, and there's Jaws and Dimitri. And Dozer and Singh is the one that is Kickstarter exclusive and you can't get it retail. The new four bot packs cannot be added on. So if those are things that you want, you'll need to pledge at a pledge level that includes them. We've also got the big arena pack as an add-on for 25 bucks, another new item. And the extra tile pack, another new item for $9 as an add-on. And then we go down to the various sleeves. So you can add on a pack of clear sleeves for five bucks and Robot Quest Arena sleeves for six bucks. And each of these packs comes with 50 sleeves. And then they have some bundles. So there's the new player, everything new, new bots sleeve bundle. This is going to include one pack of the clear sleeves and four packs of the Robot Quest Arena sleeves. This is a $20 add-on. And if you were to add these things separately, there would be $29. So you're essentially saving $9 by getting that bundle. And then as far as the all bot sleeve bundle goes, this includes nine packs of the Robot Quest Arena sleeves and one pack of the clear sleeves. The bundle here is $39, but if you were to add on these all separately, they would be $59, so you're saving $20 in this bundle. Finally, there is a hologram promo here. Uh, this is a little promo card. It's $3 as an add-on, but this is free if you are following the campaign. I'm not sure if you needed to be following the campaign before it launched, so if you are planning on pledging this, uh, you may want to come over here, follow it first, and then do your pledge. And if you're going to be getting it, it'll have a little note here saying that you're getting it free as a gift. But uh, just follow the campaign. You can do that here. I'm already following it. And then you'll see if that is added on or not. I'm not sure. It might be something that you had to be following before the campaign launched. Uh, any which way, Robot Quest Arena, this new campaign, is planning on delivering all of its stuff in June 2025, and that is coming to you from Wise Wizard Games. So we're going to go back to Kickstarter for our final Kickstarter campaign. This is for Veiled Fate Tribunal. This is from Ivy Studio Games. Uh, they're currently at $558,000 in funding. That makes it the highest, most well-funded game that we're taking a look at this week. And off of a funding goal of $50,000, that means they're funded about 11 times that funding goal. The campaign here is going to run until April the 2nd. And because these are some extras, we can go over and look at the original game, which was printed, published in 2022. So currently, Veiled Fate has a 7.7. It's a very solid rating. And it's a fairly light game. It's a 2.0 uh, complexity score that is just over the line into medium light. And it plays two A players. That's a really high player count. The reason for that is that while Ivy Studios has done a bunch of games, including um, Fractured Sky, Moonrakers, and Mythic Mischief, and all of those games were co-designed by Max Anderson, Zach Dixon, and Austin Harrison, um, this is probably their lightest game because it is largely a social deduction game with some other mechanics thrown in. Things like action points and hand management. And Veiled Fate, the artist on it is Harry Conway, who's only really worked on one game previously. It was a game called The Great Del Moody that was published back in 1995. Uh, but Build Fate was published already in 2022, so the game's out there, the art is out there, and you can take a look and see if you like the art, but he is back for Tribunal. Um, this new expansion, essentially that's what it is, Tribunal, is made up of three different modules. So you can add one or any of the modules into the game. And then in addition to that, they're also offering four micro expansions in this campaign. So let's take a look at the video here and then we'll go over the four pledges 
This one, kind of like Garfield, has a very simple pledge system. Um, there's four pledges, which are really two pledges because each of those pledges has a second pledge that makes some of the components metal. So we're looking at two pledges with two variant pledges that add on some metal components. Uh, and then we'll also look at some add-ons as well. Hey everyone, I'm Zach, one of the designers of Failed Fate. And here's what you can expect from this campaign. When we first launched Failed Fate in 2020, we made up the term strategic deduction because nothing else seemed to fit a game that has heavy social deduction elements, but a strategy-based win condition. And it's been really amazing to see how many people resonated with that idea. Veiled Fate Tribunal takes strategic deduction a step further, pushing the pedal to the floor on all aspects that make strategic deduction so fun. Tribunal is actually three full-sized expansions called Hadria, Celestials, and Servants. Plus, three micro-expansions all packed in one beautiful box that sits perfectly next to the base game. Each expansion evolves one aspect of what makes Veiled Fate so fun. Hadria demands deeper strategy in your relationship with renown points and god powers. Celestials elevate the social pressure through seven new deduction-based asymmetric win conditions. And Servants reimagines the importance of positional strategy by adding roving regional modifiers. Finally, the micro expansions all add small complexities to change the game in meaningful ways. All six expansions are fully compatible with each other, allowing you to shape your gameplay perfectly to any group. Break out Hadria and Servants for your heads down strategy lovers. Mix it up with Celestials for a more rambunctious crowd or throw everything at the table for maximum strategic deduction. There's a lot more info on each expansion on the page below, as well as some very nice how to play videos. What else will you find on this campaign? Well, a lot of discounts and added bonuses, like over $30 of free bonuses. Plus, premium upgrades like metal minis and the deluxe city center, and the fabled wooden board is back. Very much only available on Kickstarter. Take some time to explore the page and drop any questions you have in the comments. Thanks for watching, everybody. All right, so let's look at these two pledges which are four pledges, <laughs> okay? Um, the first of them is just for the expansion, Tribunal. It's a $49 pledge, $15 in shipping, $64 total. That's going to include you know, the new modules and all of the new micro expansions. And they say here seven items. I heard him in the video say that there were six expansions, meaning three modules and three micro expansions. I think he misspoke. Because if you look in the details here, these are the three modules, but then these are the four micro expansions. So I think there's one more micro expansion than he was actually mentioning. Unless one of those little micro expansions, he's not counting as a micro expansion for some reason. But anyway, three modules, four micro expansions. Uh, the next level up is just making it metal. So it's the same thing, it's the expansion content but it's adding on some metal components. And for the expansion, it is five metal figures that are getting added onto this. So this is an $89 pledge with $15 shipping, $104 total. If we go to the next pledge, this just includes, with Tribunal, the base game. So this is $125 with $15 in shipping for $140 total. And then again, they have a metal version. Now this is going to throw in those five metal pieces from the uh, expansion, but it's also gonna throw in 11 metal figures for the base game. So 16 metal figures total. It is a $209 pledge with $15 of shipping for $224 total. Now there are some add-ons. I don't believe there's an add-on section over here. So we actually have to go into the details to look at this. And if we scroll down, we can see everything that is available to add on. So they have a fate die here. If you don't wanna flip a coin you know, to determine things, they actually have a fate die that you can roll. It's $4, it's not included in any of the pledges, so that's something you'll need to add on if you want it. There are also the community city and age cards from the first campaign, $6 as an add-on. 
Uh, we've got Hadria Favor Tokens. These wooden tokens replace the Hadria Favor cards, allowing for easier visibility of played and unplayed favors. Comes with cloth bag to draw from. So that's $12 as an add-on. We've got sleeves. So there's sleeves for Tribunal for 8 bucks. There's sleeves for the base game for 12 So if you want both sleeve packs, if you're backing everything, or if you own the base game but you don't have sleeves and getting the expansion and you want to sleeve everything, it's $20 for both. And then we've got some of the more expensive things. So there is that deluxe city center that will go on the middle of the board. It's a 3D kind of building instead of just a flat board. It's $29 to add this on. And this is not included in any of the pledge levels. So if that's something you want, you'll need to add it on. There is also an art book and lore book for 30 bucks. You can get hoodies for 50. The metal upgrade kit on its own is 59 bucks. And then that really expensive, very cool wooden board, $199, and they even say here there is no additional shipping for this board, so the shipping has already been baked into the price. And then Ivy Studio is planning on delivering this campaign in February of 2025. That brings us to our final campaign, which takes us back to GameFound, and this is for Roth. This is from Chip Theory Games. Uh, it's currently funding at about $336,000 off of a $50,000 funding goal, which puts them you know, under a seven-time multiplier, like six-and-a-half-time multiplier. And if we flip this over, we see that this campaign is going to run until March 29th. Now, Roth is designed and has art done by Manny Tremblay. Now, as a designer, Manny Tremblay's worked on all of the Dice Throne stuff, and as an artist, he worked on all of the Dice Throne stuff, as well as Radlands and Wonderlands War. And this is a competitive game, or co-op, or solo game. It can be played any of those modes. It features things like action drafting, dice rolling, area majority, and variable player powers. And it's being published by Chip Theory Games, who are best known for 20 Strong, Burn Cycle, Cloud Spire, the Hoplomachus series, and Too Many Bones. So we're gonna go ahead and take a look at the video and then we'll come back and look at the three pledges and the add-ons. What if I told you that a singular battle has the power to shape the entire destiny of your people? Would you choose to fight or surrender your fate to the hands of others? For generations, clans from every corner of Drudgeon gather each year on the King's Hill, more commonly known as the Island of Wrath, where the ultimate challenge takes place and the balance of political power shifts. Rooted in tradition, forged as a remedy against endless wars, the victors not only secure triumph, but also gain control over the territories they conquer. Enter the world of Roth, an asymmetrical area control game that shapes the battlefield by harnessing the power of dice drafting. Players take turns utilizing their chosen actions to command troops, gather resources, and launch strategic attacks in a dynamic turn-based showdown. Will you choose to ally yourself with the trap-laying experts, the rage-filled coder, or opt for the long-range fighting skills of the older? Perhaps it's the skill of stealth and surprise of the Ugla that calls you, the unparalleled strength and resilience of the Runa, or the guild's mastery of transforming intelligence into covert advantages. Whichever you decide, the responsibility falls on you to leverage your clan's unique abilities to secure control and assert dominance over the King's Hill. What if I told you that a singular battle has the power to shape the entire destiny of your people? Would you choose to fight or surrender your fate to the hands of others? Okay. Chip3 has this thing that they do when they first launch they offer it up to the first 10 backers. It's pretty expensive, but then you get everything that they publish in the future, which is a great deal if you really like Chip Theory games. Uh, but this pledge obviously goes fast. Like as soon as launch happens, it's gone. So not including that one, we've got three different pledges that we can look at. There is the base game pledge for $55 with $10 in shipping. Uh, Chip Theory is another company like Garfield that keeps the shipping really low and really consistent. So no matter what level you back at, 
it's a flat $10 shipping for the US. Anyway, uh, so it's a $55 pledge with $10 of shipping, $65 total. That's just going to get you the base game. If you want to get two additional factions, you want to look at this all gameplay bundle. This is $86, $10 in shipping, $96 total. And this is going to add to the base game the Paulden and Venna faction boxes. Finally, we've got the all in, which is $246, a big jump up there. Uh, $10 in shipping or $256 total. This is going to add in some things that aren't really gameplay related. So there's an art book at this level. There is an art print set that is all metal. And this is the full set. And the art print set is what makes this so expensive. Um, you're also getting a neon dice tray. And then the one thing that's really gameplay related are these metal trap tokens. Um, right here, or sorry, metal troop tokens. So you're replacing you know, wooden tokens on the board with metal. If you just want those though, you can add them on and, and kind of avoid this huge price tag. So let's look at the add-ons themselves. Um, those metal troop tokens as an add-on are 35 bucks. So if you were gonna just add those to the all gameplay bundle, you're looking at $131 instead of 256 bucks, which is the price of the all in. Um, you can always add on more copies of the base game for 55, more copies of either fa faction for 20 bucks. The art book as an add-on is $15. You can get one metal art print for $20. But if you want the full set of them, there's seven of them, it's 100 bucks. Uh, you're saving, you know, maybe 40 bucks from buying them all separately, but this is $100 for all seven of these, and that is the item that is making that all in so expensive. So if you don't want that, then just pledge the gameplay bundle and add on anything additionally that you want, like the troop tokens. Finally, you can add on the dice tray for 15 bucks. And then lastly, Chip Theory Games is planning on delivering Roth in March of 2025. And that wraps our video for the week. Those are everything that I thought were the best games that launched between March the 6th and March 12th. So. I believe these are your, your best things to back, uh, both in terms of what's less risky and also in terms of what games look best to me. Come back in another week, I'll have another video for you with more recommendations, more campaigns, where we'll look at the videos, we'll go over the pledges and the add-ons. Uh, in the meantime, have a great week, have a great weekend, play lots of great games. If you haven't uh, subscribed or liked yet, consider doing that. That's the best way to support this uh, channel at this point in time. And I will see you very soon next week in the next one. Take care.